All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the All You Need to Know podcast on Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is Thursday, the 21st of January. First, the number of coronavirus cases in India rose by 13,823 in the 24 hours to 8 a.m. yesterday. That's more or less in line with the trend we've seen over the past few weeks. And it brings the total number of active cases to 1.97 lakh. In the top news, the central government yesterday proposed to suspend the three contentious farm laws for up to one and a half years and set up a joint committee to discuss the acts to end the stalemate with protesting farmers. However, farmer leaders did not immediately accept the proposal and said they will revert after internal consultations. The next meeting has been scheduled for the 22nd of January, a day after the farmer unions hold their internal discussions, according to farmer leaders who said this after the 10th round of talks ended at Delhi's Vigyan Bhavan. Moving on, the Supreme Court has rejected petitions seeking a review of its 2018 judgment dismissing challenges to the constitutional validity of the Aadhaar Act. The petitions were dismissed by a 4 to 1 majority. In corporate news, securities regulator SEBI has granted conditional approval to Future Group's scheme of arrangement and sale of assets to Reliance Industries' retail business yesterday, based on which the Bombay Stock Exchange has also granted a no-adverse-observation report to the 27,513 crore deal. SEBI has said that the litigation pending before the Delhi High Court and arbitration proceedings by the global e-commerce major Amazon contesting the deal should be specifically disclosed by Future Group while seeking approval for the scheme of arrangement from shareholders or the National Company Law Tribunal. Uh, The BSE stated this in an observation letter that was also dated January 20th. A Delhi High Court order has asked Reliance Infrastructure to maintain status quo over its shareholding in two power distribution companies, that is BSES Rajdhani Power and BSES Yamuna Power. The Anil Ambani promoted company owns 51% stake in both the firms and has reportedly been looking for buyers since mid-2020. Fitch Ratings has said India's medium-term economic growth potential is around 6.5%, but weak implementation of reforms combined with continued financial sector problems could lower that number. The rating agency said the revival of the reform agenda is among the Indian government's policy responses to the COVID-19 pandemic shock. In international news, on his last day in the Oval Office, Donald Trump granted clemency to dozens of people on Wednesday, including his former strategist Steve Bannon, the rapper Little Wayne, and former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick in one of his final official acts as president. The president pardoned 73 people and commuted the sentences of 70. Many are relatively little-known felons, But the list includes a number of celebrities, former lawmakers, executives and people connected to the president, his family or members of Congress. Yesterday, Joseph Robinett Biden Jr. took charge as the 46th president of the United States. He planned to begin immediately unwinding President Donald Trump's policies on immigration, climate and other issues yesterday with at least 15 executive actions, including moves to reverse U.S. withdrawals from the Paris Agreement and the World Health Organization and to stop the construction of the border wall with Mexico. In international markets, U.S. stocks ended strong yesterday with the Nasdaq climbing nearly 2%. And all three early rises in the Asia-Pacific region have started strongly positive. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Hormuz. How are we looking today? Good morning to you, Alex, and to those tuned in as well. The Sensex continues to play the waiting game, not only with us, but also with 50,000 as well. The index scaled an intraday high of 49.874 on Wednesday, en route to erasing all the losses made during the two-day drop on Friday and Monday. The outperformers in midweek trade were autos, 
IT and PSU banks. Early ticks on the SGX Nifty showed that the index traded 50 points higher, around the mark of 14,700. In specific stocks then, and this will be centered mostly on earnings, Bajaj Finance reported a 29% drop in net profit for the third quarter as net interest income fell 5% and bad loans inched higher. Pro forma gross NPA in the third quarter would have been 2.86% as compared to 1.34% in the previous quarter. Loan loss provisions were up 63% from last year and the company also took a one-time principal write-off of 1,970 crore rupees on account of the COVID-19 stress. More details on the company's restructuring and its new partners in the credit card business are available on our website bloombergquint.com. L&T Technology Services saw a 7% growth in its dollar revenue for the October to December period. The company says that it won 7 deals during the quarter with total contract value of over $10 million. The company has raised its FY21 guidance for which it now expects a revenue decline of 6.5% in US dollar terms as compared to the earlier guidance of a 7-8% to decline. Some strong numbers from Havels reporting a revenue growth of close to 40% from last year while EBITDA has nearly doubled. Revenue from Lloyd Consumer was also up 70% year on year. The company attributed this performance to an expanding distribution footprint, robust supply chain and gains made from the unorganized sector. Revenue for the switchgear, cables, lighting and electric consumer durables business also grew between 25-50% to from last year. HDFC AMC saw revenue decline 8% during the quarter, while net profit rose 5% year-on-year. The number of live individual accounts declined 4% to just under 9 million at the end of the quarter. Some other stocks that will react to earnings include Philips Carbon Black, where profit rose nearly 80% despite revenues being flat. It has also declared an interim dividend of 7 rupees per share. GMM Fodler, where profit rose 10%, while revenue was up close to 30% from last year. The company also said that it is witnessing a healthy order backlog among all product lines. And Tejas Networks, which returned to profitability during the quarter, contrary to estimates of a net loss. Margins too were back at the 10% mark, which were nearly eroded in the same period last year. Asian Paints and Bajaj Auto will be the two nifty names reporting results today. But there are plenty of non-nifty names who come out with numbers. I'll highlight some of the key ones. Bandhan Bank, Biocon, JSPL, Kajaria Ceramics, MCX, SBI Cards and SRF. You can read up on the entire list in our All You Need to Know copy. Aside of earnings, Ultratech Cement will consider a proposal to raise funds at its board meeting on Saturday. It will also be declaring its quarterly results that day. Also watch out for Kirloskar Oil Engines where SBI Mutual Fund has acquired 3.5% stake in the company. Some IPO updates. IRFC's IPO was subscribed 3.5 times on the final day of bidding. Institutional subscription stood at 3.78 times. Non-institutional subscription was 2.66 times while the retail portion saw a subscription of 3.66 times. And Indigo Paints IPO was fully subscribed on the first day of bidding. Overall subscription was 1.9 times led by the retail investors, the portion for whom was subscribed 3 times. And that's all from me today ahead of the weekly options expiry. I wish you all a safe day ahead and it's back to you Alex. Thanks Hormuz and thank you all for listening in. That's all we have for you on this podcast but as always do check out the website bloombergquint.com for more. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoy listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.